Moving on to question two here. We have a question um, with two parts. Part A, we're asked to show um, using this diagram here, diagram one, or figure one, why this equation, cos x minus 2x minus half, only has one real root. And then part B is a small angle approximation for three marks. So let's do part A first. Oops. So part A. Well, we've got the graph here, if you read, of y is equal to cos x, where x is measured in radians. So we're then given the equation cos x minus 2x minus a half is equal to zero. So notice we have two parts here. We have cos x and we have this 2x minus a half or minus 2x minus a half. Now, what would happen if I said cos x is equal to this 2x plus a half? This is just a a linear equation, right? It's, it's a straight line. So if I made these equal, so cos x, cos x is equal to 2x plus a half. So this is why we need to use the diagram. And that's the big clue for this question. We'll tell you to use the diagram. Something to do with the equation. Well, we can make these equal. Cos x is equal to 2x plus a half. Well, this is cos x. So all we need to do now is sketch 2x plus a half. And hopefully, what we should obtain is that it only intersects at one point. If it intersects at one point, then it has one real root. So all we need to do is sketch this. Now, 2x plus a half, well, where is that going to cut through the y-axis? So when x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus a half. So it's going to cut through at half. So if I change this to black, it's going to cut through roughly there. And 2x is a positive gradient, so it's going to go this way, it's going to go upwards. So if we draw a sketch of this, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you show that it's only going to intersect once. So it's going to look something like this. Now, this isn't going to be perfect. Oh, okay, I'm using a mouse, but hopefully it looks okay. So it's going to look something like this. So it cuts through at a half there, so that's a half. Um, believe it or not, if you can see that. So that's a half. So it intersects at this one point here. That's the intersection point. So, all we need to say, um, if I change it back to white, that it intersects once, it intersects once, intersects once, therefore, one root. So that's just part A, so it's just a little bit of intuition, you know. Look up the equation that we've got, cos x minus 2x minus half. Can we make them equal like this? Once we obtain that, notice that that's just a straight line. Sketch it and show that they only intersect once. So that's just part A done, so quite nice uh, part A. Part B, a little bit trickier, we have a small angle approximation. So it's nothing too intense, but we're going to use this equation that we have again. So we're given that the root of this equation is alpha and that alpha is small. Now we have to estimate the value of alpha to three decimal places. So you're given the small angle approximations in your formula book, but I have written it down here just for clarity. So cos x is approximately one minus x squared divided by two. So these are in your formula book again, but we've got it here, so let's have a look at doing this. So cos x, so cos x is one minus x squared over two, minus two x, minus two x, minus a half. And this is equal to zero. So notice we've got this x squared here, and it's divided by two. So we want to simplify this, and we also have a division of two on this side here, um, or with this minus a half. So if we multiply everything through by two, we're going to get integers. So one times two, that's two. This will just become minus x squared. Minus two x times two, that's minus four x. And then finally, minus a half times two gives me minus one. So that's equal to zero. So if we simplify this, what we're going to get is so we're going to get minus x squared. We're going to get minus four x. Two minus one gives me plus one. And this is equal to zero. Now to make life easier here, I'm going to make this, I'm going to take this to the other side. So I've got it in terms of positive, uh, or a positive coefficient for the x squared. So this would be the same as just multiplying everything through by minus 1. So x squared plus 4x minus 1. Now this becomes a lot easier to work with. What we need to obtain now is the roots of this. Because we have a quadratic, right? But notice when we 
factorize a quadratic or we solve a quadratic, usually we'll obtain two solutions. So we're going to have to pick one. So if we work for it, we can have a go at picking them at the end. So this isn't going to factorize. So I'm going to jump straight into completing the square. So hopefully you're familiar with completing the square. So if we complete the square with this, that's going to be x plus 2 all squared. So if I take the negative square, 2 squared is 4, so we take that negative, that's minus 4, and then we carry on with the rest of it. So minus 4 minus 1, that's minus 5, is equal to 0. So now we're going to take that 5 across and square root it. So therefore, x plus 2. Don't forget, you want the plus and minus of this square root. Of 5. So we're nearly there now. What we know is that there is two x solutions here, so therefore x is equal to minus 2 plus root 5, or x will be minus 2 minus root 5. Now how do we pick which one this is? So there's no trick involved, just think about the question logically. We have x is either equal to minus 2 plus root 5, or x is equal to minus 2 minus root 5. Well, this is x, okay? So this intersection is what alpha is. Well, which one of these can it actually be? If we pick minus 2 minus root 5, this is clearly going to be a negative solution. But this here is in the positive quadrant. This clearly is a negative. So that one, we don't want. This is our x solution, our alpha value. So if we work this out to three decimal places, what we obtain is that alpha is going to be equal to 0.236 to three decimal places as required. And there we have it, so that's question two fully complete.